Let's think for a moment, if you will, uh, in a little different way about these three different kinds of learning. In fact, let me ask you to think about all of the people that you have met in your life, whatever your age, and to reflect on what I will call level one. And by level one, I mean visible behavior. That is, the things that people could record on a camera if they were to follow you around day in, day out. These are the things that we say and do. Now, in your experience, what proportion of a person's visible behavior would you estimate to be habitual? Now, by habitual, I mean uh, mindlessly repetitive. So when you think about visible behavior and whether or not people tend to get up at the same time, eat the same time, eat the same things, travel on commute in same or different directions and so forth, in your experience, what proportion of people's visible behavior would you estimate to be habitual? Write that down. Take a moment and write that down. Now let's consider what I will call level two, or conscious thought. So we are all aware that we're thinking. We are aware that we think. And uh, we may not reveal everything we think to other people at level one through what we say and do. Of course, what we're thinking may leak to our visible behavior when we frown or we sigh or we smile or we shrug. Those are little indications of what we're thinking inside, yet we may or may not choose to reveal those thoughts to others. So in your experience, given all the people that you've met thus far in life, what proportion of the way people think would you estimate to be habitual? Now, uh, mindlessly repetitive, you can't really see what people are thinking, but when they raise their hand to speak or they open their mouths, to what degree do you have a sense of what they're going to say or where they're coming from? Now, I invite you to think about level three. Level three is our semi-conscious, our pre-conscious, values, assumptions, beliefs, and expectations about the way the world is or should be. Let's call them VABES for short. Values, assumptions, beliefs, and expectations about the way the world is or should be. In your experience, given all the people that you've met thus far in life, what proportion of people's VABES would you estimate to be mindlessly repetitive or habitual? Take a moment, please, and write that down as well. Now, I've asked these questions of people all over the world. You can imagine doing the research might be difficult because simply to study level one, you'd have to follow people around 24-7 with a camera and then have a group of experts view the video and decide which patterns are repetitive over and over and over again and how much variation there was. But everything below the uh, underline, you cannot see, right? So uh, anything down in here, this area, anything below that, we really can't see. All of this is invisible. But that said, when we behave, we reveal little iceberg tips, if you will, hence the blue trapezoid. The iceberg tips of what we might be thinking or what we might be believing or feeling. So if I, I've asked over 1,500 uh, managers in corporations all over the world, in China, in Japan, in Australia, in Thailand, in Johannesburg, in Egypt, in Athens, Turkey, Paris, France, Rio, Costa Rica, all over the world. And on average, people will say, 75% habituality in their visible behavior, 85% habituality in their conscious thought, and as much as 95 to 100% 
repetitiveness in what people believe. Now, I think you could agree that there's ample evidence for this. If you look at Northern Ireland, if you look at the Balkans, if you look at Rwanda, Burundi, China, Tibet, India, Pakistan, pick your favorite part of the globe. There's ample evidence that people's values, assumptions, beliefs, and expectations about the way the world is or should be persist generation after generation after generation. So if we have these semi-conscious babes, these assumptions about the way things should be, we may or may not be aware of them until something happens where people say, mm, that's not quite right, that doesn't feel right. And then we would have what we might call a vabe abrasion. That is, we're expecting one thing, professors should maybe wear white shirts and ties. I'm not wearing a white shirt and tie, so you might, that might be a little bit of a, a vabe abrasion for you as you think about what you're expecting to see in today's course. Now, if that's the case, then we could conclude that people tend to be creatures of habit. And we could, uh, there's a lot of discussion we could have about where those habits come from, when they emerge, what happens with them. Uh, but they have serious implications. One of which is, I will declare, is the most important question in life. And that is, given these habits that develop over time in our lives, when, if ever, will a person become something more than a vessel, transmitting the genetic tendencies and the vape-based tendencies of previous generations on to the next. Csikszentmihalyi, who wrote this very provocative book, The Evolving Self, argues that doesn't happen for most people, and I agree. Richard Dawkins refers to uh, memes. Memes are intangible packets of information passed down from one generation to another. I prefer to think of them as vapes because they're not just cognitive, but they also tend to have an emotional and a deep value-based component to them. 